Heute zusammen, da ist der Mark Storace vom Crocus und ihr schaut The Metal Voice. Yeah! This is Mark Storace of Crocus and you're watching The Metal Voice. Welcome to another edition of the Metal Voice, a special edition live from Switzerland. Switzerland! Mark the Voice Storacci from Crocus! Crocus! Yeah! Ooh. Mark! Hey! Give me a hallelujah rock and roll, rock and roll brother! <laughs> <laughs> we got a new album out. It's a 17th studio album. Been around for almost 40 years. How does the voice still do it? Not bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I keep fit. You know, I try my best not to drink too much, smoke too much, <laughs> get yeah, enough sleep. I, I gotta. We'll, we'll, we'll go into your back catalog just quickly, and then we'll talk about the new album and the tour. I just want to tell you one thing right off the bat. When I heard you on this new album. It sounds like you're a 20 year old, like a 20, 25 year old, just belting it out. You can't tell this is a, a, a band that's been around for what, 40 years? Is that, is, is it 40 years this band has been around? Well, my math isn't that great. Let's see. <laughs> Mine either, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> they started way back in 74 wow. without me. Okay. Fresh, very and, uh, fresh. Actually, I was singer of a band called T yes. then back then, a progressive rock band from Switzerland. And uh, we took Crocus on the road with us for our last tour. Yeah. And that and that's how I got to know the guys, you know. Okay. okay. I was totally amazed with the guitar player, Thomas Kiefer. Yeah. Right. Who uh, um, unfortunately is no longer with us oh. today. He's he's up there with Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yes. And, and he loved Jimi Hendrix and um, this was an incredible guitar player. So anyway, two and a half years later, when I was living in London and had another band called Easy Money, I got this phone call from Chris and uh -huh. asking if I'd like to join the guys, you know. So I flew over for an audition and uh, the rest is history. The rest is history, as they say. Yeah. So, so we got the new album. It's, it's already been released in Europe. It's coming out in North Europe, America on March 5th. It's oh. already gone uh, number one in the iTunes charts. Nice. Great. Nice. The album's called Dirty Dynamite. I hear a lot of your early influences on there. You know, it's a back to basics, a hard rock album. Anybody that just likes their straightforward 404 hard rock, this is the album for you, Dirty Dynamite by Crocus. Uh, what are some of the influences that uh, maybe came out through this album? We're all influenced basically by the same bands, you know. I mean, you can hear Led Zeppelin, you can hear the Deep Purple, you can hear ACDC, The Free, uh, The Who, <laughs> God, you name it, Aerosmith. Uh, but but it's you really have to get, have a sharp eye, sharp ear, and you pick up on all the influences that, uh, that fill the whole Crocus soul, you know. I mean, we're really old school. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And um, that's where everything's coming from. You know what I like about this album? You're not, you, you go back to basics, sort of like the hardware metal rendezvous days, but at the same yeah. time, you're not scared to use a little bluesy piano. You're not scared to push the boundaries with help, right? right the right. Beatles doing help. And rearranging it. Is that you singing on help all by yourself, or is there somebody else singing alongside with you? Uh, no, there I have. Uh, uh, this special guest from Germany, his name is Tommy Hart, yes. and I've worked with him before, and uh, he's a nice person, a great singer, and he's a younger generation than, than we are, Yes, uh, but still not too young, I think he's in, in his 40s, uh, sorry Tommy, if I, uh, <laughs> or maybe late 30s. <laughs> And uh, anyway, the main thing is that uh, his heart and soul is 
is there behind his voice and you can hear that and everyone said so far how how good our voices complement each yes, other which is yes. a great thing to have when you have two singers yeah. singing the same song sharing the the lines the passages the, the verses you know right. and um, the more i listen to it the more i love it it's a, it's a masterpiece and and I, I'm glad that we slowed it down. Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 made, what was the decision? What was the thinking about slowing it down compared to the traditional Beatles arrangement? <clears throat> well, I mean, we're not the first to slow it down. I think the first uh, band to slow it down was Deep Purple. Oh, okay. And this was before Ian Gillen joined. This oh, was, okay. I think, their first ever video that they did. You can see it on YouTube of the song Help. Right. And the idea was John Lord's rest his soul, yes. <clears throat> um, who who thought that the song Help was way too fast. It's a way too nice song with yeah. way too great chords to be wasted because it comes like uh, it comes and goes in a flash, you know. Right. So um, it, you know they, they slowed it down. That's the result, you know. So this was the last song I sang in Abbey Road studio during the recordings, and it was like a really turn on to be in the studio where right. yes, this this whole this band created so much great music. You know, they were one of our uh, one of mine for sure uh, greatest inspirations when I was still a teenager. And what was the, was it a, a goosebump moment when you walk into Abbey, <laughs> Abbey Studios, you know, did your skin start yeah. to? Definitely. I mean, it was like, yeah, we're going to, you know, uh, we're going to record in Abbey Road Studios and you, you take the flight, you sit in a London cab and, yeah. <laughs> and then you pull up in front of the studio, you know, and then you start to get the shivers. It's like, <laughs> did you walk across the street? Like, did yeah. you walk across the street all four of you guys and take a picture? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! You <laughs> I would have done that. that on the website. Yeah, right, I saw on, that. Focus cool. online and see Chris and I fooling, goofing off <laughs> yeah. on the on the zebra crossing there. Right. So if you if if I guess someone who really loves the toe tapping, straight ahead, hard rock and blues, this is the album for you. I mean, it's even got that Bond Scottish vocals, but you take it even a step further. I find the vocals. I got to tell you, Mark. You really stepped it up vocally. I, you're, get, you're getting older and you're getting better. That's how I see it. I, I, what a great singer. I mean, that's what music today is missing. Great singers. Great frontmen. Great frontmen, yeah. I'm, just, I'm really thank impressed. I want to tell you that. Thank you very much. It, uh, it does me, my old soul good to hear <laughs> stuff like that. Car driving. Yeah. I would say car driving is a key word here. You put this <laughs> album on and you want to drive your car. And well, you then you, you find so yourself speeding in no time. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we got like the song like Live My Life. I mean that that could have been right off of Black Ice of ACDC. I mean that's like a lost track from that recording session, you yeah. know? And the uh, beginning of Better Than Sex. I mean you, you listen to that, it's like a Randy Bachman guitar intro from his uh, Any Road album, you know? It's right there, so. Yeah. I yeah. really like Yellow yeah. Mary also. I thought a very so, nice catchy little Is, is that Smelly Nelly's sister, Yellow <laughs> Mary? <laughs> could be, but she she's more of a, the spiritual type, I think. <laughs> okay, good, good. So, and again, the help with that, that's a long-standing tradition of uh, you know cover songs on a uh, on a Crocus album. You know, going back to American Woman on One Vice at a Time and the Stayed Awake All Night off of Headhunter. Uh, you know, um, what's the uh, the sweet song off of uh, the Ballroom Blitz? Blitz. Ballroom Blitz. Blitz. So, yeah. out, Alice Cooper. And you ain't seen nothing yet. That was off of, to rock or not to be. What, what's with the BTO Canadian connection there? Uh, Backman Turner Overdrive. Well, was, I guess here's the question: Was it pl when, when American Woman first came out? Us Canadians, we used to hear that on the radio. That's how we got into Crocus. Was this a strategy by management, or was it just a, to like sort of penetrate the the Canadian market, or was it actually you know we love this tune, and we want to you know vamp it up? make it a little hard rocking because we think we could do a good job with it or was it a combination of both it was actually a combination of both okay because fernando is the guy who was a big bachman turner 
fan and yes. he knew the songs, you know, he right. knew the, the songs already. And uh, then the idea came up through our management. They said that if um, if we had a, a Canadian content, yes. that uh, we would get more airplay. Yes, it's true. true. Very true. You know, so uh, we said, well, uh, American woman, uh, you know, Randy Bachman, and yeah. later on, Stay Awake All Night, right, you yes. know. And then we did you ain't seen nothing yet That's as right. well yeah and each time i thought wow it's amazing these songs they really they really fit they they're still not totally discovered kind of, kind of <laughs> although they were they were Hit. old hits you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but somehow i felt there was still room for for me vocally to expand you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, with with American Woman especially. I like American Woman, your version, better than the real American version. <laughs> I gotta tell you, when I first heard that on the radio at 16 years old, I, I ran do. out and I bought the album. One place at a time. That's great how impressive song. it was. Really great. It is, the way you and covered did, your vocals. I didn't realize that it's uh, actually it's an anti-war song. I thought it was all about sex, you know. <laughs> Before I... I had to sing the lyrics, and then I I, uh, I I listened to the song intensely and was writing down the lyrics off the record. Yeah, and I started getting into the whole philosophy of the song. You know, so wow, okay, you can keep your war machines. Yeah, you yeah. can keep your ghetto scenes. Right. You know, so, wow, heavy shit. <laughs> <laughs> when you did Headhunter, just just to go back a little bit, so you had Judas Priest, Black Sabbath producer, right? You walk into the studio. Now, we went from One Voice at a Time to Headhunter, which is both phenomenal albums in, in different ways, right? But Headhunter, I mean, that's the back in black, that's the moving pictures of Rush, that is the pinnacle of Crocus. I mean, what was it like in the studio walking? Did you realize you were making something great? Well, it, it already felt good during the way the whole thing was. Uh, created, you know, when we were create writing the songs, we were all together in this big hot barn, like you know, yeah, like the and and uh, it was like we we were sweating in the sa sauna together and enjoying playing rock music. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great to sweat when you're playing rock <laughs> music, you know, <laughs> and it it was inspiring and um the whole thing and then um, when Tom Allen came on the scene yes uh, I mean we, we went in between we were inspired doing other things and enjoyed great conversations went horse riding and so on and then did the demos we played for hours on end and we sat in hotel rooms writing lyrics looking for ideas together. It was a real band, um, how can I say, creativity. It was like our heads were really so together, right. you know. You finally with connected, there was a connection, or some sort of mental connection. Yeah. There, was, there was something like a, a sixth force, <laughs> a sure, sixth sure, sense, sure. working overdrive. And um, yeah, right. it just, all fell into place so naturally, you know, it wasn't right. forced. It was a, a very special thing. And Tom Allen was very inspiring. And the whole thing, you know, like, with I, th I guess we were the first band to ever use a, a skull on, yeah. on the vinyl cover, yeah, you know. Yeah, cool. And, um, and the half skulls on the back, you know, it was... Yeah, that was well done. Really, really... Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, look where the skull got to, you know, and we're still yeah. using it today. Still using it, exactly. <laughs> you know what? To go out to all the metalheads, go out and get Headhunter. Yeah. Headhunter is, is a yeah, by, by far. It, uh, it, it's the, it's a the classic, most classic. metal album re ever released by Crocus, right. I yeah. would say. One my my fir early uh, first uh, when I first heard of Crocus, I mean, it was it was the long stick goes boom was playing on the radio. And uh, yeah. sing us that first line. <laughs> no, don't you know that line. 
Oh, that's all right. We all know about <laughs> 69. The classic first line. And, and I'm listening going, wait, is this like a, lo a lost Bond Scott, Scott you know, a vocal from, from ACDC or something? How, how do you answer your critic that says, you know, Crocus is like an ACDC clone band or something? You, 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 you get that often? Well, I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, if you get mad about it, it's not going to solve the problem. Right. <laughs> your voice is your voice, right? You, you know, uh, every musician, we know that, that we're not copying, downright copying anybody. Sure. It's like, we came from the same era, we came, we have the same influences. That's the way I see it. Right. And, and Bon and I happen to have the same kind of... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Style. <laughs> you know, raspy, high, raspy, tenor. Raspy voice, yeah. Yeah. Mark, I always noticed, like as a vocalist, you've always sounded somewhere in between Bond and Brian Johnson. You were kind of like in the middle, because you can do both styles flawlessly, and you could do a ballad, where Bond really never went into ballads. <laughs> you can stretch, that's what I'm trying to say, you're more of a flexible yeah, vocalist. Yeah. Where Bond and B Brian Johnson, they were just kind of like a one-trick pony in a sense. They just, they had that one style, and that's what I liked about you, Mark. Oh. Thanks. Well, I'm, I'm aware of that too, and I guess that comes from having covered so many different kinds of songs, you know. One of my first so. concerts, the first time I saw Crocus live was June 9th, 1983, Montreal Forum, Gary Moore, Crocus, and Def Leppard's first headlining tour was Respiromania, and you guys... <laughs> destroyed you guys <laughs> kicked ass if we're allowed to say that it was amazing i said there's no way def leppard can follow up following these guys do you remember anything about that tour oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> the, the pyromania tour i mean was uh, the pyromania tour for def leppard and for us it was the headhunter tour the headhunter okay. yes and um they were just one notch under Michael Jackson's Thriller right. yeah, yeah, yeah. from being number one, yeah. and that really bugged them. And um, and we were up up at number twenty four and happy as pigs and shit, yeah. <laughs> because, because it was the first time we ever got that far, and we didn't have a Mutt Long uh, producing us, yeah, yeah, right? Either. You know, because we couldn't afford to pay millions to to a producer, but anyway, uh, but you know, another point is that we have been fighting, uh, working our butts off, trying to, you know, get further in life, you know, and higher in the charts and everything. Yeah. Right? So being at number twenty four was for us, you know, really awesome. fantastic, and I guess. People felt the energy, so we had really great shows. We were right. we were kicking ass. You and were. They were licking licking it up, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and um, obviously that started to to create a problem then with the headliner. I mean, yeah. whether it was Def Leppard or we even had that same problem with ACDC. Wow. You know. I heard that. Yeah. Uh, they threw us off. Def Leppard threw us off. You know, and it's with uh, Def Leppard that that was uh, we were playing arenas. It was actually voted, or it no, it wasn't voted. It was uh, a fact that was the biggest selling tour, uh, Crocus and Def Leppard of to uh, of 1983. 83, yeah. Yep. So moving on to okay, so you had that huge success with Headhunter. And of course, you know, come the sort of the the corporate. Here comes the businessman, right? And they're just, I guess, you know, enticing. Would we say enticing the bands and saying, "Hey, guys, you could get a far more better reach." Me and Alan, we've talked to enough artists in the '80s to see, you know, how everything just kind of went. Not only Crocus, but everybody, right? It was more flashier. It was more polished. It was more bigger sounds and more accessibility. Um, then you had the Blitz and Change of Address, which personally, I like the Blitz and Change of Address. I don't care what anybody says. I think, yeah. they're, I think they're, if you strip away the production, they're good songs. And, um, but 
I, you want to talk about that time? Yeah, you're going, going for the leather and the studs kind of image to the, you know, all of a sudden there's a lot of more colors in the costumes and a lot more. What, what, was that was that a corporate decision or was that a band decision? Well, it, it was actually a corporate decision which was pushed on the band yeah. and they in, increased the advance okay. to, to yeah, get more right. yeah. clout, you know. Yeah. So... So we we thought we thought they're putting their money where their mouth is. Sure, sure, so, sure. So it must be it must be true. These guys these guys are the they have the contact with the shops there on the business side, and they're they're like the gurus must be must be there, and and yeah. they they can see what's going to be big in the future, and we want to get better. Yeah. and sell more albums and but then something happened which was very uh we can we can look back at it now from yeah. from the distance exactly. yeah and and uh, this was when chris von Rohr was kicked out of the band okay that was when they could come in and see fernando and, and i uh, are not as uh, how can I say? Chris is a real tough cookie. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so when he was out of the way, uh, then they could influence us more easier. Right. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. And and for us it meant it's like they said you you have to polish up the act a little bit. So. Uh, you know, no more death and destruction with with the axe and smashing the guitar and <laughs> check out your your stage clothes uh, less sleazy and more middle of the road and yeah, and so on. Right. Um, let's bring some color into the music and and the the whole outfit and everything. And and there was, I guess, glam. Glam metal right. was, yeah, yeah, yeah. was born. Right. That's exactly you know? it. Yeah. It was even Judas Priest. Everybody was on it. I mean, everybody was on this. Yeah, they're terrible. Yeah, they're, everyone was paying a, a whole lot of money for for uh, great having great and unique stage clothes that looked different than the other band. Right. Yeah. You know, and then to top it all, then D. Snyder and you know what came the hell out with D. Snyder. What the heck's <laughs> going on here? Yeah, the, the, with all the uh, fancy clothes, I don't believe you know? it. I don't believe it for a second. I'd take your side of the story any day over D. Schneider. Can we can we talk about that, Mark? Are you, have you read D. Schneider's book? Are you aware of what was written in his book? Shut up and give me the mic. It, uh, I didn't read his book. Okay. No, <laughs> I don't just, think I'll ever read his. Book. <laughs> <laughs> he brings it up that his, I'm on your side, Mark. I'm on your his, side. I don't his, care what these. His Schneider. wife Suzette did some costumes for you, and I'm, I was just assuming it's around the Blitz time. And uh, when she went to get paid, she was refused payment by the tour manager, and it left some very, very bad feelings on his part. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, come on, this is so childish. Um, we gave her. A chance. How, I mean, how do you do it? When you go, before you buy a truckload of wine, you yeah. want to taste the bottle, no? For sure. Yeah. yeah. So so we just wanted to have samples of, see some clothes, you know? Sure. Okay. And our tour manager, LD, <clears throat> he um, sent off uh, the... The, the sizes and I, I guess I can't even remember the de the details you know, it's, it's ridiculous like 30 years ago but in the end she came with the stuff we tried it on it it and it looked horrible I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm sorry you know and and they 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 got so offended it was such a great insult to them and uh, they wanted their money, and LD said, "Hey, we're 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 not buying, you know. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep the clothes, you know. You, know, uh, you need sorry, no you need deal. to have both sides of the story. I mean, you can't just you know. That's, right, that's why we got Mark. Yeah. That's why we got Mark. Anyways, uh, thank you very much. So, for so that, here on the Metal Voice, if ever D. Schneider's watching, if there's anything, here's your chance to say what you need to say to D. Schneider. We'll we'll put this to bed after this. Here's your chance. Go, Mark." Well, I mean, <laughs> how can I say? 
first of all, we don't mix business with music. So, you know, yeah. it, it's like keep the whole, the, try and keep the two things separate is very important. Yes. If it's yes. if it's his wife, I'm sorry. You know, what can I say? Uh, sorry, sorry, hit me on the head. <laughs> you, you know what? We're, we're, we don't want we don't what want to start any. I do? <laughs> we don't want to start it's, any argument between you and D. Schneider. Yeah. We just wanted to have your opinion on it, and we don't want to uh, by any by any you know we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Like you said, business, business, music, music, and that's all it was. Well, yeah, that's it. Um, so now we're moving into the we're almost coming full circle now to the new album, the new Millennium. Millennium. You got Hellraiser. I mean, you weren't even on a couple, a few of uh, Crocus's albums in the '90s, I believe. And then uh, you got Hellraiser, and it was Rock the Block, I believe, and Hoodoo, then, yeah, Hoodoo. Never. Rock the Block, and then Hoodoo. Right. Yeah, so then you got Hoodoo, and then Freddie Steady's back in the band. The band yeah. is sounding fresh, exciting, yeah. and another monster album, which people should know about. Hoodoo is another solid album by Crocus, and I've heard you say this before, that it probably would have been the pre, I guess the album that would have been made after Headhunter. Uh, maybe you want to yeah. talk about Hoodoo a little bit? For all those viewers out there who don't know about Hoodoo, yeah, well, you know, Hoodoo is uh, the reunion reunion right. album. Yes. In 2008, we reunited the class of 82, if you like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, it was very, very blues influenced and had some really great tracks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and Hoodoo Woman was be became an instant hit, you know. Yes, and yes made a, a demo uh, video out of that one and um, but still you know the one that's just came out now right. Dirty yeah. Dynamite takes it a step further uh, uh, you know? pa Mark pause there for one second I want to tell you something I've been to Switzerland and when I was a young lad on a plane and as we were flying and touching down on Switzerland I was listening to the radio because they had a radio on the plane and you hear yeah. yodeling and yodeling and yodeling, and then Crocus comes on. And then you hear a song yeah. yodeling and yodeling. You guys are big in, in Switzerland. I mean, you're, you're up there with the yodelers. I mean, Switzerland is known for it. I was a young teenager, and I couldn't believe I'm listening to Crocus on a plane on a KLM going to a Switzerland, touching base. So I, 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 was, I was pretty shocked how, how popular you are in Switzerland. You're the biggest band to come out of Switzerland, right? Crocus is the biggest band to come out of Switzerland. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's the most uh, international, uh, most well-known band from yeah. Switzerland. Okay. I mean, rock music by Crocus is known internationally. and Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but we worked hard for it, you know. Yeah, right, yeah, absolutely. That's for sure. Okay, so let's go, let's go to your new album. Sorry I cut you off there. I just, it, it reminded, that story, I remembered it. I had to say it. It's all out. It's all out in the open. We all know what happened with me when I was young. Now, yodeling, yodeling. Now, yeah. <laughs> yodelers. A lot of yodelers in Switzerland. Now, the new album. Let's get back to it. So, I mean, if yeah. people want to, I hear there's a. Your manager told me that if you go to www.crocusonline.com, and I believe yeah. you can get a bundle. You get that T-shirt. You might know a, another T-shirt. Yeah, specially made T-shirt. A bundled T-shirt with the CD and. Uh, I guess that's a limited time, I believe, right? The There's a limited uh, yes. amount. Yes, amount. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, so everybody, if you want to go into their whole back catalog or the new album, you go to uh, www.crocusonline.com. You'll find out all the information on uh, all the merchandise, all the albums exactly. you can pick up. Uh, you get on their Facebook site, you get on their YouTube site, and you can be updated with, I guess, some sort of uh, email. Uh, also, we should also mention there's vinyl. Vinyl, the new album yeah, is on vinyl. vinyl. I mean, that's that's something great, you know. Nowadays, vi people are buying vinyl again. We got the new turntables with a USB plug in there. You can record, uh, make CDs out of vinyl, and you know, do it all instantaneously. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. And what do you want to tell the fans out there about Dirty uh, Dynamite? Well, it it uh, it took us two years. Okay. To, to uh, come up with all the songs and finish it, and you know, okay. And now we're so happy with it. Um, but it was, uh, you know, um, a, 
kind of we worked on a couple of songs then took a break and worked individually and then got together and jammed the songs out and then we took the next two songs and it was a very slow process with breaks in between and uh, that gave us more objectivity to look okay. at the songs and see that everything fitted together to form uh, the, the red line which runs through the whole record you right. know yes and I think it, it's a it's a different kind of process uh, than what I told you before what we did the headhunter album in less time yeah and uh, with great results but here we have uh, the opposite thing where we worked on, on each song individually and and we let them kind of soak in wine you know okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ferment they're fermented <laughs> <laughs> and, and in between you know uh, we we lived our lives you know right. and did our thing you know and um so when when the whole thing came together and we had about 10 10 songs it's it, it started to look like a great picture sure, and that's sure. where we got even more inspired and re-recorded stuff and um, it started to sound better and better and better so we'll we'll wrap it up mark uh, again dirty dynamite is going to be released uh, in different countries on different times but in the next week or so a tour is going to be planned i believe in europe hopefully we're waiting yeah. for something in north america and canada perhaps www.crocusonline.com you could buy the t-shirt you could buy the cds you could buy the vinyl you go to their facebook site uh youtube uh my vinyl uh maybe pick yourself up a headhunter while you're at it maybe a one vice at a time metal rendezvous, metal rendezvous. Tokyo, tokyo nights, tokyo nights. pick up yourself song. a copy of hoodoo <laughs> yeah. and uh maybe some belt buckles you have any belt buckles <laughs> Just buy everything you can from this man, Mark Storacci. He's a wonderful, he's the, the voice. The voice. On the metal voice. Uh, we're going to be doing a short little segment on uh, uh, Saxon's new album, Sacrifice. Um, it just, do you have any quick 30 second, you know, uh, memories, of memories of Saxon? Saxon touring with Saxon? Yeah, I, I, we go back a long while. Yeah, yeah. Saxon were still young and Crocus was still young. And <laughs> And uh, we used to play on the same stages and uh, sure, sure. then meet at the hotel bar and share a few drinks. And, and there was uh, a good friendship happening with Saxon always. It's, it's, uh, it's great. Every time I meet, meet Biff, it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, I guess we'll be seeing each other soon again. You know, they're going to be going on tour too. Or maybe you guys could hook right. up there. Maybe I'm just making, <laughs> maybe you talk to your management, hook you guys up. <laughs> Put you on tour together. We met Biff. He's and we were lucky guy. enough to uh, interview Biff. It was one of our first interviews, and a true gentleman, a professional, and uh, yeah, the definitely. band's the band's cooking as much today as it was in the early '80s. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, Mark, we want to thank you. Um, thank you too. Yeah, and, thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much, and uh, everybody else, Crocus, Mark Storacci, the voice. Get it. D Dirty Dynamite. It'll be released thank in you. North America March 5th. Rock on. <laughs> I really enjoyed that interview with uh, Mark Storacci, the voice. the voice. And you know what? There's been a new release as well by Saxon. Saxon. 20 year, 20th, 20th album. album. Sorry, 20th album. Andy Sneep. I know Jimmy just loves saying that name. He's one of his name. favorite producers. Again, quality album. Yeah. From the one and only Saxon. Sacrifice. Saxon. Sacrifice by Saxon. New release. They're releasing in Europe on March 1st. Yeah. And the UK on the 4th, and in the US on the 26th of March. So you got to get out there and check it out. What do you think, Jim? Straight ahead metal attack. That's what I think. No more ballads, no more mid-tempo songs. It's <laughs> boom, 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 in every your song. Face. And the song Sacrifice, it's like the what call to arms. It's really? Like a, it just it's like, uh, yeah, hits you right between, you're right between the eyes. Just like a, a call to arms with the hammer of the gods. That yes. sets the tone for the rest yes. of the album. It's right there. It's a great song, a fast paced song. And guitars. The guitars are crazy on this yes, album. Yes. You listen to uh, uh, Night of the Wolf. Night the of solos Wolf. on that that's going on, it's, it's unbelievable. It's a great follow up to Call to Arms. Yes, absolutely. Biff's voice is like you expect Sensational. from Jackson. Always the best. The Gandalf of metal. So, what would you say, Jim? 
I would say 9 out of 10, go get Saxon Sacrifice. And I know that we're probably going to be interviewing them. If they come around to Montreal, Canada, Hopefully. we will be talking to Biff once again about They'll this. They'll do some, some signings down in Mexico. And like yes. I said, the album's coming out soon. Uh, you know, Call to Arms is a very... And there's something special, magical about that album. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to put into words. That one I give a 9.5 out of 10. This one I give a 9 out of 10 as well. A, a yeah. great follow-up, a consistent album throughout. And it's an aggressive album, like you said. It's... it's how does uh, uh, Biff put it? Like, uh, it's like just said, you know what? No more ballads, straight, no more slow stuff. We're just music, gonna hit you no, right between the no eyes. No fills, just just great <laughs> music, you know. Pounding, so car driving. You got to get out there and get it. Saxons sacrifice, and also go pick up Crocus, uh, their new album, Dirty, Dirty Dynamite. Dynamite. Two good albums from two classic bands. We'll see you next time on the Metal Voice. Thanks for checking us out.